Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another tutorial on creating a Java chess engine. In this tutorial we're going to focus on en passant movements. I've already written it all out, we'll just go over the code. But before then, I should mention that in the last tutorial we worked on optimizing uh, specifically uh, a captures to the right by coming up with a, a better way to loop over each square on the board to find pawn pieces. And so all I've done is I've implemented that into not only the capture right, but the capture left, and all the moves, including the pawn promotions. So uh, we'll now get started in on the en passant stuff here. Uh, what I've done is first we need to know, is en passant even allowed? Because unlike the other pawn moves, uh, an en passant can only happen under very specific conditions. Namely, if the last move was a, a pawn move to forward. All right. So, for instance, look at this board here. I realize this is not a, a real uh, position, but here we have two pawns side by side. Right now, if that black pawn had moved to forward the last move, the white pawn could take it by capturing forward and to the right. So here's how we do this. We first need to know history, the previous move. So we have to make sure that the history is greater than 4. That is, that there was a previous move somewhere. Then what we do is we take the history and make sure that the last uh, character, the last digit, and the third last digit are the same and that the second last digit and the third and the fourth last digit are two apart. Let me explain why we need to do this. This basically proves that the last move had moved forward two. Because if you remember how the format of moving forward two works, it's uh, the last digit and the third last digit are the same while the second last digit and the fourth last digit are two apart. Now the reason I didn't uh, say it equals two or negative two, instead I used the whole absolute thing, was because it could have been upon moving forward two from the black side or from the white side, which are in opposite directions. But either way, an empassant is then allowed. All right, so the first thing we do is we get the uh, file, which would be a six in this case because we're actually getting the file of the piece we're going to take out, uh, this black piece in this scenario. And uh, the file 6 obviously represents the G file. And a trick to do that is when we get history.charat of the last digit, uh, what it comes up with is not just a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, even though that's what it visually looks like, but it comes up with the number that corresponds with that uh, digit. Uh, in uh, a char value. So what you have to do is subtract char 0. Anyways, it's just a neat trick to convert between chars and ints. All right, so then we come up to our pawn moves. This is somewhat the same as uh, our previous optimization was, except we know that if there is an empassant opportunity, there will only be one of those opportunities. So we don't need to have a while loop uh, because we only need to check, is there a possibility? And if not, then don't uh, do anything. All right, so we come up with the pawn moves by taking the white pawn, shifting it over one, and saying, and black pawn. So this basically checks, is there a white pawn and a black pawn beside each other? Then we take and rank eight, because we want to make sure they're also on the correct rank. That would be, uh, or sorry, rank five. That would be this rank here, and then we say and not file A because it's a capture right, and we do this file mask 8 of E file. Basically, file mask is an array, and uh, the sixth item in the array is a binary number that represents everything that is in file 6, or the equivalent of file G. This way, we are uh, uh, eliminating if a queen had moved to that spot or anything else, and making sure we're in the right file here of the last move. This also eliminates 
uh, if we had an extra uh, set of pawns here, for instance, if this was the case, but if uh, the last move had been this pawn, this file mask 8 uh, doesn't uh, allow us to uh, recognize the other scenario. All right, and where we get this file 8, I pasted it uh, way at the top here, uh, right under all our static declarations. And rank 8, these are all, uh, this is in hexadecimal form, but I quickly just typed these out. And I also provided a file mask, uh, of both of them, just in case we will later on need them. All right, so once we get our pawn moves, we take possibilities. Now possibilities should end up being identical to pawn moves, since there's only one. So what we can basically do is just call pawn moves and just right away turn it into possibilities or possibility. This should work. All right. Now let's do one more thing. Let's set up the board here. I've already set this up. I've placed a pawn down two, a pawn here, and a scenario that it shouldn't recognize over here. All right. I also put a little debugger stopper here uh, at the history. Uh, because the history is going to be empty, so we're going to have to manually add something in. So what would the code be for this last move, assuming that we tell history, basically, that this pawn moved forward too? Well, it would be uh, one down, six over, to, one, to three down, six over. So it would be one, six, three, six. So what we do is we go down to the bottom to variables. It should be side output. Then you should see variables. Click on the history uh, uh, variable. And in quotes, because it's a string, put in 1636. Hit enter, and history should have been changed. All right. Um, now we run this. Yes, history is greater or equal to 4. And yes, uh, the last move was 2 forward or backwards. File E becomes 6. Possibilities is set and found. So now the list is 5, 6, space E. This should work out. Yes, it goes from the 5th file or the F file to the 6th or the G file. And then space E represents that this is an empissant move. Now, if we go through the other one, you should find possibilities is zero, and the list will be returned as is. All right, Empasons are fully implemented now in this engine. Until next time, enjoy Java.